Pastors, business owners, entrepreneurs, I got a quick question for you. Have you ever struggled with trying to figure out how to successfully host a virtual conference? Well, on today's edition of Bootstrapping Business and Ministry, I'm gonna give you three tips to show you how to do that. What's going on everybody, Glenn P. Brooks Jr. here, excited to be back with you for another edition of Bootstrapping Business and Ministry. I don't know if you've ever attempted uh, to host a virtual conference. Uh, maybe you've done it uh, in a brick and mortar setting, obviously live, but with these COVID uh, situations and these pandemic conditions that we've been living in, uh, most people are struggling with how to take their live event and bring it online. Well, today I'm gonna help you really dig down on how to figure that out. I'm gonna take you into a live lunch and learn that I did with a few of my MAPS Masterclass uh, participants, and we're gonna show you exactly what that looks like. We're gonna come back at the end, tell you how you can connect with us, but right now I want you to check this out. We're talking about three tips on how you can really successfully do a virtual conference. How to host a virtual conference. I'm gonna give you three tips to succeed at that. Let me share this on the front end for all of you guys who are just kind of chiming in. Listen to me really carefully. If you are a producer of content, you can create a conference all day, every day, whether you've done it or not. If you are a producer of content and you show up regularly, everybody on this call right now fits this category. You absolutely have it within you to produce a conference. And when I talk about a conference, guys, I'm talking about something that you build from the ground up and you offer it to the community or to the world and they want to come interact and engage in what it is that you do. Now, when we talk about conference, one of the things that I'm gonna talk about is from the perspective of that there are several contributors. Generally speaking, when you're talking about a conference, you're gonna get more than one a contributor, more than one speaker, more than a, you know, a panel. You're gonna get a, a, a live interaction. There's gonna be more touch points than what I would call just a single talking head. Right. And so in that being the case, this is things that content providers and often will produce in order to generate revenue. But here's the problem. They don't think about it from the person who is actually sitting in the seats perspective. And that's what most of you guys just got finished engaging in. It is very different to produce a live event in person where you get a chance to see people physically than it is to do one virtually. There are so many mitigating factors that happen virtually that you just have working for you in a live setting. And so today, when we talk about successes, ways to produce this that make it really, really, really uh, uh, something that I think is going to, and, and let me just real quick, let me back up. When I define success, I'm not talking about how, how much money you make. I'm talking about how much people walked away from with the light bulb moment. That's a success. When you have a flood of people at the back of your event, you know your event is a success when people don't leave. Let me say it that way. It's like church. You know church was good when don't nobody leave. You know the meal is good when don't nobody want to get up. Because it's like, oh my God, like how, how much more can I take in? Whenever we do MMC meetups, I know it's a hit when folk don't want to go home. You got to hit the light. Somebody, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get up out of here. That's how you know it's a success. So virtually, I want you guys to understand the success when I talk about success. That's the way I want to characterize it. Number one, I want you now, again, we're talking about if you have an event, uh, um, uh, say, Keith, and you have invited three people to be a part of it and you may be hosting the event, but there are three presenters at the event and it's all online. Number one, I want you to make it easy for others to market it. Put that down. Put that down in the chat. Christine, if I do an event and I invite you to be one of my presenters, Deshelle, I invite you to be another one of my presenters. Claudine, you are the third presenter. Here is what will cause me to um, uh, lose, is if I don't make it super simple for you to market the thing. And when I say that, guys, I'm talking about simple things like when you create a flyer, please have one call to action. Put that in the chat. When you create a flyer for the event, just even if it's a digital flyer, have one call to action. What is the one thing I want them to do? When you put together an event that has multiple calls to actions, here's what you're gonna do with the people that read it. You're going to confuse them. 
I will rarely put on my uh, uh, in any piece of content of mine four or five different ways you can get in touch with me. You're not going to see that happen. I'm not even going to put on that you can reach me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, link. I'm not doing all of that. I'm giving you one place to go find me. And I get to choose what that is. Sometimes it's a website, which by the way, Keith, on my website, you can catch every way, every, every, every place that you can come find me, you can find it there. If I send you to my YouTube channel, when I send you to my YouTube channel, I'm going to drop, drop in the description on the YouTube channel every single place that you can connect with me. If I send you to my Facebook page in the About Me section, there's going to be some key information where you can get other things. Let me tell you what I know about people. When they come to events, they want the information they want to leave. They ain't got time to be fishing for, well, how do I sign up for this? And here's the other case in point, and this just happened to us recently. I'm saying to myself, I am not going to promote this to other people if I go to click on something and I can't even sign up myself. Guys, that's a, that's, that, that's a problem. Now, in my case, I don't have a problem picking up the phone and calling a host or calling the person who invited me. I was invited to do something um, uh, a year ago and the thing wind up blowing up. They paid us our deposit and everything. We got paid, the event never happened. And you know why? Was because the way the organizers put the event together, it was way too difficult for people to connect to it. So number one, please make it easy for the other people to market. And one of the reasons why you want to do that, guys, is because it is a un it's understanding or it's a it's I want you to understand that when you invite people to be a part of your panel or a part of your event, you're inviting people with an audience. You're inviting people with somebody else that you can leverage your brand against what it is that they do. And your hope is, is that they would market the thing. Now, what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this, I'm gonna absolutely stage it so that they do do that. I'm not gonna bring on people who are not gonna market my event. It's too hard for me to get this thing promoted if you're not gonna be a part of this. That's one of the reasons why, if you guys notice how we do things, I do collaborative things. I do things with people who all have a, a, um, a stake in it. Monty is on the call right now. One of the things that he and I do on a regular basis is, is that we make it easy for if he goes live for an event that he's doing, I don't even have to be a part of the event, but he's going to mention me depending upon what he's talking about. If it's relative to what I do, he's going to mention it. And I promise you, as soon as he tags me in that fee and my name pops up, there's going to be a way that that person get in touch with me. And even if he has to text me and say real quick, uh, I just mentioned you, which by the way, just happened last night in a live that I did. And I mentioned the MMC. I just wanted to give you a heads up. He wasn't even asking me, where should I send them? He knows that already. But what I do is, is I mess around and go back to that feed. And now I'm going to interact and engage with that feed to a degree in order to, it happened this morning on Christine's feed. Christine promoted or talked about, and she is not even doing an event. She literally just posted her graduation certificate. Super excited, just graduated. Boom, yay for me. Rob, Rob, we're excited. All the people who know her interacted and engaged. Kudos to you, Christine. Da, 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 da. There was one person that says, This MMC thing, what is it? Can you tell me more information about it? Christine, smart, said, Do me a favor, inbox me, and I'll be more than happy to, to have that conversation. But here's where, here's where your man jumped in to the conversation. Because when you tag me, you've made it my business. When you've put my name in a key, it is all of a sudden your business. So what I'm literally saying is I'm giving you an invitation to engage. I'm not tagging you, Phyllis, if I don't want you to engage that process. Oh, you like the t-shirt? Boom. No worries. I love it too. My guy, Van Zago Johnson, hooked me up, tag. If he's smart, he will engage that person and make sure that that happens. That happened with Christine. The person just, I literally, and I have pictures and thumbnails ready to go just in case that happened. So that immediately, as soon as that happens, boom, there's a thumbnail of me looking all professional. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, Christine, by the way, now I'm not going to talk to her friend directly. 
I'm talking to her. Chris, that's Christine's friend. So I say to Christine on the fee, Christine, by the way, if your friend, now I can see that the friend has asked, but if your friend wanted to know more information about this, please send them right here. Well, Christine can do that or the friend can see that when I engage her on the fee and I'm making it, what am I doing guys? I'm making it easy for other people to market. And when you are doing a, an event that you're paying for, that it's your blood, sweat, and tears. I think about Christine and the the the, the uh, promotion of the um, performance that she's doing at the end of the summer for her summer camp. If she has people involved, what you want to do, Christine, make that thing easy for these parents to market. Make it super simple. Something that it just takes the easy or the hard out of the equation. I call it the easy button. I know Staples said it, but I stole it. Give them, give them the easy button, y'all. I got to get me a new easy button. I used to have one. You understand what I'm saying? Get them the easy button. Number two, I want you to prime your presenters for success. Prime your presenters for success. Never, ever, ever host an event that you don't do what I've learned a long time ago from John Maxwell is sit your presenters down and have a meeting before the meeting. Here's what you're having in that meeting, Phyllis. I am casting vision, number one. Put that in the chat. In this meeting, before the meeting, I am casting vision. Number two, I'm giving next steps. Number three, I'm asking for feedback. Put that in the chat. Number one, I'm casting vision. Does that make sense, guys? When I say casting vision, I want people to know exactly what we're doing. What is this event about? This is where I'm giving them talking points. This is where I'm telling them, hey, this is the end game. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. Because what you want to do, particularly when a virtual event is in, in play, you want to make sure you have as many voices saying the same thing as possible. Because if they are, it makes your job easier. That's how people go viral. That's how people, when, when you organically show up and something begins to catch fire, it's because you got everybody saying the same thing. So I'm casting vision, Tanja. Then I'm going to give you next steps. Here is what I want to accomplish. And then number three, I'm going to position myself to ask for feedback, get questions. I, 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 want, I want to create a scenario where you, get, where you ask me questions where I get some feedback. What is it that you don't understand? How is this going to help you? That's why you always want to play with people who want to play with you. See, I don't get into business and we'll talk about this as a whole nother talk on how to build a success, a successful collaborative. First of all, you have to collaborate with people that value what you value. It is really easy for Keith and I to talk the same language because our values are aligned. Let me give you all a newsflash. When we created the MAPS Masterclass, we created it with entrepreneurs or going after entrepreneurs, pastors, business owners, because those people value what we value, particularly when their business is building people. It's a, it's a, it's a no brainer. So now when we talk offline, there's an instant connection. So number one, we said, make it easy for others to market. Number two, I want you to pr prime your presenters uh, for success. I don't care how good they are. I don't care how dope they are. I don't care how much of a following they are. Please put them in the loop. Don't have your presenters out there. Now someone is asking them a question about the event that they're on for you and they don't know how to answer that. That's a problem. And the reason why is because now all of the marbles or all of the um, eggs are in your basket and you just created a hole in it. And they're going to fall right out of that basket because you're not empowering somebody else to be able to answer on your behalf. Michelle, I promise you, if we do an event together, you're going to know exactly why we're doing that event. And you are going to be so bought in that I don't need to have a separate conversation with you once we get going, because you will have been brought in from the very beginning. When we do the bootstrapping business and ministry event, the one that Christine came to, it was a live event. We're gonna really do a virtual event. I promise you, when we do that virtual event, every single contributor will know exactly what everyone else is doing. So that if Monty, who is one of those people, is on a call with somebody and they say, hey, I saw that flyer about a business builder event. Now that's not his event, it's mine. 
And I promise you, he'll be able to answer. And at that particular point, why? Because I prepared him to do it. Number three, and this is the last one. I want you guys, because this is virtual, you have to be really careful not to skimp on reminders. Not to skimp on reminders. We're talking about creating an event that would be a success. Here's what you cannot do. You're gonna have to create a system that when you bring people into your queue, you go live, you say, hey guys, talking about three pain points relative to this thing. By the way, at the end of that, I'm gonna give you guys some information about an upcoming conference that I want you to be a part of. So today we're gonna talk about these three things. You hit those three things. Between point number two and point number three, while I got them on the line waiting on me, I'm gonna say, by the way, stick around because I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about this event that I've got happening. And here's the truth of the matter. All I need you to do is to drop your email in the chat if you wanna be involved with that because at that particular point, we can get you more information. Are y'all ready for number three? Put number three in the chat. Then I'm going right to number three. Why do I want that email? Because that email is going to go into an ecosystem that now I'm going to be able to generate as many reminders and I'm going to go as often as I need to in order to remind them. We could talk about that on a separate occasion. But the point of the matter is, is that once I got your information, I got you. What you do not want to do is skimp on the reminders. People have stuff going on, y'all. Lot, lot, everybody's life is busy stuff is happening and i try my best to never take it personal when somebody misses a thing of mine what i do do is i make it personal not and say what could i have done differently to make sure that you were overly reminded i don't take it personal and get upset because you didn't come I make it personal and say, what could I have done differently to ensure that you were in the loop? And I did something, I want y'all to put this in the chat, I over communicate. The success, your success will rise and fall on how well you communicate your next event. Well, I hope you got tremendous value out of that, guys. Here's what I know, doing a conference live, meaning in person is very different than successfully pulling that off virtually. Uh, if this has helped you at all and you wanna connect with us, do me a favor, click the links in the description and uh, we certainly would love to connect with you because here's what we know to be true. Uh, at the end of the day, we all need some help. Well, guys, if you've enjoyed this video and this kind of content here on Bootstrapping Business and Ministry, we want to encourage you to please like the page, share it with a friend, click on one of the videos and see some of the things that we've done in the past. Because here's what I know, you cannot get to any place of significance by yourself. Why? Because we all need some help. We'll see you back next week.